All right, in this example, we're given that f prime of x is equal to 2x, and f of 0 is equal to 0. And we want to complete the table of values, and then we're going to graph f of x, okay? So um, it, it, we're basically going to do the same thing that we did in the last video, only this, this particular problem doesn't have any context around it. We're just given a function, and essentially what we're doing is we're constructing the antiderivative graphically, okay? So let's first start by um, uh, graphing what f prime looks like, right? It's just 2x, so it's a line. It's a straight line with a slope of 2. Now notice that my y-axis, my vertical axis, is going up in increments of 2, right? So um, I'm just going to draw a straight line connecting up those points with a slope of 2, right? This has a slope of 2 because, you know, my, my grid uh, squares are are, uh, are going up by twos on the on the y-axis. Okay, so there's my there's my graph of f prime of x, and I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I know that f of one, the net change from zero to um, to one, which is f of one minus f of zero, is equal to the integral from zero to one of this f prime of x function dx. Okay, and I can rearrange that to find f at 1 by adding f of 0 to both sides. So I get f, f at 1 is equal to f at 0 plus the integral from 0 to 1 of f prime of x dx. Okay, now I was given here that f of 0 is 0. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that out in the table. Oops. Okay, <laughs> just always have these issues of drawing in the tables. Okay, so I'm starting at at zero, and I'm going to add this area, right? I'm just adding this area. It's just a triangle, and the area here is one, right? Because the height is two, and so I'm going to add one, and um, I get one. Okay, so f of one is one. All right, now I just have to keep doing that. I just have to keep doing that. So let me uh, let me scroll down, give myself some room. I'll do one more here, and then I'll I'll uh, probably do the rest offline, so this video doesn't get quite so long. F of two is going to be f at one plus the integral from one to two of f prime of x dx. Right now, I just figured out f of one was one, and so I'm going to add the area from one to two. Okay, now um, each one of these grid squares is 2, so it looks like this is an area of 3, and so I get 4. My um, area is, or my, uh, yeah, so my f of 2 is 4. Okay, all right, I'm going to complete these, <laughs> these uh, calculations, and then I'll be back. All right, so I completed those calculations, and um, and then I filled out the table and plotted those points, right? Now look at this. This is kind of interesting, right? Because um, remember, our derivative was 2x, right? Remember, our derivative was 2x. Now you know, you know what function has that derivative, right? x squared has that derivative. Now that's not the only function that has that derivative. Um, you know, uh, x squared plus 5 would have that derivative as well. Um, x squared minus 64 would have that derivative as well, but um, the only one that would have an f of 0 equals 0 would be x squared, right? So, so essentially we're, we're discovering, we're discovering graphically that, and you can see too, these values are just the squares, right? Right? It's going 0, it's 0 squared, 1 is 1 squared, 4 is 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, right? We're getting x squared. We're getting f of x is equal to x squared, which is what you would expect, right? Because if the derivative is 2x, then um, there has to be some sort of x squared involved <laughs> in, in the original function, okay? So, but what we've done is we've constructed that antiderivative um, graphically and numerically using the graph of the derivative, okay? 
All right. So that brings us, I kind of already mentioned um, what an antiderivative is. Essentially, if capital F prime, this is, sounds way too complicated than it needs to, um, but if capital F prime is F of X, then we call capital F of X an antiderivative of F of X. Okay, essentially we're just we're just taking derivatives in reverse. To find an antiderivative, we're reversing the process of taking the derivative. So while we're on that topic, let's go ahead and do example four as well. What is an antiderivative of 2x? All right, so this is just asking, okay, what function has a derivative of 2x? Well, we know that the derivative of x squared, right? So we can write d dx of x squared, right? The derivative of x squared is 2x. So, um, so that means that x squared is an antiderivative. Antiderivative of 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 two x of um two x. Now, is that derivative is that antiderivative unique? No, right? Um, I could take the derivative. I could take uh, I'll say no, and I you know a counter example would be you know the derivative of x squared plus 5 is is 2x as well, right? Um, the derivative of of uh, x squared plus, or say minus, or what did I say, minus 64 has a derivative of um, 2x, right? So basically, um, in general, we can write that the antiderivative is um, any x squared plus some constant, whether it's positive or negative, will give you a um, a derivative of, of 2x, okay? All right, so I'll meet you in the next uh, next video.